How are we doing guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be for the Sage PvE Awakening Guide. And to start off with, we're going to look at the buffs that you're going to be using whilst grinding. The core buff is going to be a simple cron meal, a frenzy drought, and any destruction stone. The spirit one is absolutely fine. Um, if you find that you are not tanky enough to use a frenzy drought, that's fine. You can definitely use a giant's drought instead. If you're still not tanky enough when you use a giant's drought, that's fine too. Then you're going to have to obviously use the beast droughts, which is going to give you some more tankiness. That being said, on the optional buff side of things, when we're looking at the Villa Body Enhancement buff, if you don't have a pay to win tent, you can skip this. If you do have the tent, I would always recommend you popping this. It becomes a core buff at that point. Spirit Perfume Elixir, on the other hand, is something I would not suggest most players to use. Again, if you're a bit squishy, the 300 HP will help you. So in those situations, it is beneficial. You don't need the mana recovery um, just by putting mana recovery on one skill, which I'll show you on the skill add-ons in just a moment. You will never need any MP sustain whilst playing Sage. However, if you don't want to use that skill add-on then and you don't want to have to worry about potions, then go ahead and pop a Spirit Perfume Elixir. Now, the crit hit rate plus five is going to do very minuscule damage buff for Sage. And the reason being is most of the skills in the combo will have 50% crit. Some of them will have 100% crit. And Chain Lightning, your opening skill that pulls, has 0% crit. So the Spirit Perfume Elixir will definitely boost the damage of Chain Lightning. However, all the skills that have a 50% crit hit rate, once you activate Shock Relay at the beginning of your combo, you get a 20% crit hit rate buff for 10 seconds. And then once you proc your skill add-on, you then also get another 20% crit hit rate buff for 10 seconds. So now you've got an extra 40%, so that brings you up to 90. You've got two sheet crits on your character um, as base. So that means you're gonna have 98% crit hit rate on 5% crit skills. Therefore, it's not necessary for the Spirit Perfume Elixir because it gives very minuscule damage increases. So now let's move on to the skill add-ons. I have two different sets of skill add-ons for you guys. Now the first set here, Form Shift is optional. You can completely change it if you want. And the recovery of 20 MP on that skill will allow you to grind without the use of Spirit Perfume Elixirs or Mana Pots. So it's pretty nice if you just want to chill grind. But like I said, it is optional, so feel free to change it. And you will use this first set of skill add-ons if you have a 100% hit rate in the area that you're grinding. Now, don't worry if you don't know that information. I'll show you guys how you can figure that out in just a moment. Now, moving on to the second set of skill add-ons. This is if you do not have a 100% hit rate in the area that you're grinding. You can see we've uh, put the evasion debuff on Atul's spear there to try and make sure we get all the hits onto our target. Um, on this one, Upsurge is the optional skill add-on skill, so feel free to either change the skill or the add-ons, it's completely up to you, but the rest of it is core for the skill rotation that I'll be showing you. Now, to figure out whether or not you have a 100% hit rate in the area that you're going to be grinding, press start, come to your inventory, go to my stats. You will find accuracy and accuracy rate on this stat page, and those are the two important items that we're going to look at. Um, now, if you don't want to do any math, what I'd recommend is pop all the buffs that you're going to use in grinding. Um, namely, it's really a drought and alchemy stone that matters, but you know, you might as well pop your villa and cron meal anyway. If you want to make sure everything's 100% right, ignore the guild buffs, they have zero effect on accuracy. So, what you're going to do is come to B8, come to one of these dummies, and you're going to do radiant annihilation into Atoll Spear. Go back to the inventory, go to my stats, and then you can see my accuracy rate has jumped up to 30% here. Um, so now that that's done, take the accuracy rate of 30%, take a note of that, and take a note of your accuracy of 854. Now, just do note, if I didn't have my alchemy stone on and I didn't pop my drought, that it would be less than 854 accuracy on that sheet. So just make sure to do the math or just to do what I showed you there. Once you've got those numbers jotted down, we're going to go to a really helpful website. Now, once you have that information, you're going to come here to garmoth.com. This will be linked in the description down below. Pop in your accuracy value that we showed earlier. So for me, it was 854 and your accuracy rate. So that's 30%. 
And then this will let you know your hit rate in these different end game grind zones. If you don't see your grind zone in this list, that means you've definitely got a hunch and crit rate because it's uh, probably lower tier than what you see on your screens now. So just remember, if you've got a hundred percent hit rate, use the first set of skill add-ons. But if you're grinding somewhere, let's say Olund's or Crypt, um, and you don't have a hundred percent hit rate, then you're going to want to use the second set of skill add-ons. So now let's talk about the crystal build. So for the main hand, we've got Elkars. For the sub weapon, we got Corrupt. For both the helmet and the shoes, we got Han Hooms. For the chest, we got Special Attack Evasion. For Begs, we got Jin Vipers. And for our outfit, we got Bala. This gives me an extra crit on my sheets, which allows me to get that 100% crit without using the Spirit Perfume buff that we talked about earlier on all my 50% hit um, crit hit rate skills. So it's really, really helpful for PvE. Um, now, if you are a PvE player only and you have no interest in PvP, for your main hand, you can swap your L cards for Jin Addis crystals if uh, you don't want to use this Valor crystal here. However, the better choice would be RBF Kame, uh, especially for PC players that are grind, uh, grinding abandoned monastery. The extra human damage will go a bit further in that grind spot for you. For the chest piece, you don't have to trade these out, but if you are grinding the abandoned monastery on PC, the Elvia spot, then RBF or Corbonus is what you want to put here. For your hand hooms, you can trade those out for Macaloids. That will give you some extra AP buffs. So it gives you just more damage at the cost of some tankiness, which hopefully you shouldn't need, but that will increase your damage. And that is the PVE build. But obviously, if you guys do enjoy PVP or you do have to do a lot of PVP for your grind spots, I would recommend uh, sticking with a similar build to what you see on your screens now. So now let's quickly go over the PVE movement. Now, for most places, when you do Bolt into Lightning Surge, Bolt into Lightning Surge, Bolt, you've pretty much got to the next pack. But sometimes, depending on your grind zone, you do have to travel a little bit further. So in that case, we're going to start from the beginning. It's Bolt, Lightning Surge, Bolt, Lightning Surge, Bolt, Shock Relay, Double Bolt, Rift Storm, Double Bolt. This should get you to wherever you need to go. So just to quickly show you guys what that would look like in-game, that's Bolt, Lightning Surge, Bolt, Lightning Surge, Bolt, Shock Relay, Double Bolt, uh, Rift Storm, Double Bolt. So that's plenty of space that you're covering there to get to your next pack. So now let's get into the combo itself. And before we get started, just note that Aftershock and Spear Bolt are practically the same skill. They both proc the add-ons that we have applied onto it. They just have different cooldowns. So just know that when one is on cooldown, it will use the other one that's off cooldown and vice versa. So starting off, we got Chain Lightning to pull your pack. Then we're going to do Shock Relay into the Aftershock and Lightning Surge. This is to get into a position whilst doing damage to hit everything. And this is to tighten up the gap between you and the mobs to basically stick to the mobs. That's why you use your space input here. Then we're going to go back into Shock Relay to cancel the animation of Radiant Annihilation. We're going to follow that up with a Lightning Bolt. And then we're going to go into Atoll Spear, back into Shock Relay, going into Spear Bolt, followed by Up Surge. And then we're going to go into Form Shift along with the Flow. And we're going to end with Atos Fist. Everything will be dead here, unless you had a really bad pull. Um, feel free to either just Bolt by dashing. Right after you press F, you can just dash and it will take you to Awakening. Or you can just do a regular Stance Switch if you like. And then just hit him with like a shock relay or um, what's this one called? The Rift Storm. And that should finish them up at that point. Um, you can also spam shock relay along with lightning surge just to finish them off if you like. But that's going to kind of mess up with your movement. So if you do do that, just know that uh, moving around is going to be a little bit more difficult to the next pack. So do keep that in mind. So now I'm going to show you guys of me using that combo at Star's End with 261 Kuda. I didn't pop my drought here because I might be doing a bit more damage than a person that actually has uh, 261 Kudum because I got I had to do some weird stuff in my gear to get to this point. So to compensate, I didn't pop the drought, but you can see we can easily clear it with the combo that I've listed. So now I'm showing you basically the same thing, but in Sakraya. Um, I will note that you have to have really tight pulls to kill him with this combo at 261. Honestly, I'd recommend 269, but if you've got the DP, you, you can clear uh, Sakraya at 261. 
Okay, so now let's discuss uh, what you would do to this combo if you heavily outgear the area in which you're grinding. Now I consider the first line up here, core skills, along with these three skills here um, to be your core. So if you heavily outgear the area which you're grinding, try this first of all and see if it clears uh, the mobs. Now for me in Sakraya, this 100% doesn't work. I can't clear with these few skills. In Star's End, it, it can clear, but it's not consistent. So it's not good. So for me, this doesn't work. So it probably means most console players, we can't use this, but if you're PC, one, you guys got the two black stars. Uh, we've only got one available on console. You've got the Awaken one available for you on PC. So if you're running double black stars, and especially if you're running um, high performance mode, so um, you have higher frame rates, you guys actually do more damage in your skills than we do here on console. So this might work out pretty well for you guys on PC. So that being said, um, now what I personally do is I just don't use upsurge and I use that as my filler. So that's what I do, but that's not what I'd recommend. The first thing I'd recommend is get rid of Atoll Spear from your uh, rotation. And if you're still clearing, then I'd get rid of Upsurge. Now, the reason I still use Atoll Spear because it gives a few seconds for the mobs to group up. So it's just a bit more chill, but for efficiency's sake, you shouldn't really use it if you don't need it. But, you know, I, I prefer I prefer the chillness of using it than not. So after that, the, the next one is Upsurge. So once you get rid of Upsurge, um, then you're left with this skill rotation. And then if you don't need the bolt, um, you not only get rid of the bolt, you'd get rid of this as well because um, you're only activating Shock Relay to um, cancel the animation of bolt. So then we're back to where I showed you at the beginning. This will be the skill rotation that you're using. So you're going to have to test it out if you do outgear the areas you're in to see what works best for you. And that's the advice that I have for you guys. Now, for the last piece of advice I've got for you guys, if you really, really want to mid-max and be super optimal, certain packs, um, you might actually want to do Shock Relay into Spear Bolt and then your pool skill. Um, not every pack this is going to be better, but some packs they are. Because as you're moving from pack to pack, if you actually use these two skills as movement as well, um, you'll get to where you want to be faster and then you pull from the position that you're at. But this is um, something that you're just going to have to practice to figure out when it's right to use it. So I can't really tell you like, oh, this is when you should definitely use it every single time. Guys, if this video was helpful, do consider sharing with other people in the community and leaving a like. If you find yourself coming back to my channel quite often, do hit that subscription button. But that being said, thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.